Ladies and gentlemen, Will Stewart-Jones from Three Radical. Cheers. So, uh, hi everybody. So, I'm, I'm painfully aware that I'm one of three remaining people that stand between you and a, and a hard-earned drink in the bar. So, you'll be pleased to hear I have 15 minutes. I have 200 slides to get through, so we've got to crack on. So, anyway, so, um, obviously the, the theme of this year's event is uh, from player to professional. And obviously, you know, who better to, to take as a, as, a, as a role model than, than Roger Federer here. So, um, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit, uh, obviously somebody yes, yesterday mentioned that the best talks are when somebody spins a story or tells a story. So, very much, uh, I've gone back and thought about my four years at Three Radical and had to think about what some of the pivotal moments have been. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story, um, some of the cool things that we've done over that time. So, my particular pivotal moment that I want to talk about goes back to 2016. Okay, so Three Radical have been going about five years in total, so, uh, you know, only a couple of years in, in those days. Um, so, what we did was, um, we decided, we'd launched in the UK, and we decided we wanted to make a big splash in the market, so we thought we'd pick an event, not too dissimilar to this, where we'd go to a trade show, uh, make a big splash, so we picked, unsurprisingly, an, an event called TFM, stands for Technology for Marketing. Uh, if you haven't guessed already, the show is all about where you go if you want to find about cool technology that might help you improve your marketing. So that's what we did. So as a new company, we wanted to make a big splash. So I uh, asked the CEO, we got a nice marketing budget together and created a lovely stand. Uh, and, you know, lo and behold, because we we're gamification technology, we also used a fantastic game mechanic to draw people on stand. Um, and at this point, I'm going to pause. I'm going to ask a bit of audience interaction. How many people in the room have had to man a stand or a booth at a trade show? Come on, I can't believe that you know, at some point in your life, even if it's like a stall at a fate when you're younger. So I'm sure what you'll, you'll, you'll experience if you've done that is that you, you end up talking to an awful lot of people. You have some very interesting uh, conversations. Um, but I guess the best analogy is that you have to kiss an awful lot of frogs before you find your prince or princess that you're going to have a, you know, a meaningful uh, conversation and perhaps leading to a sale. So I'd been there, uh, I think it was probably halfway through the second day, uh, when uh, this person came up to the stand, so a lady by the name of Lydiane. Um, so she's French, um, certainly not uh, uh, harking back to that previous comment about kissing frogs. Um, but, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. She came from a company called GVC. Um, so um, if any of you knew, GVC actually own a brand called Foxy Bingo. So for those people in the UK, you'll probably know the Foxy Bingo brand. But for those of you that don't, these guys do online gaming, but they do pay-to-play gaming, okay? So what we're talking about here is we're not talking about the kind of gaming where you stake your entire house on red as opposed to black on a roulette wheel. These guys are all about online bingo where, um, you know, people are staking 5p, 10p um, to play bingo online just in the same way as they go out for an evening uh, to watch the cinema or to go to a physical bingo event effectively. So not high stakes. And to be honest with you, sort of right-hand side there, you'll see there's like a chat box where, in actual fact, a lot of people go in for the social element of the gaming as much as the game itself. So we had a conversation, oh, oh yeah, and just an aside, um, but the brand is also fronted by uh, a six-foot-tall uh, fox, rather bizarrely, and this kind of played out over t on TV over six months, and it was finally unveiled as Heather Graham, a real A-lister, which is, which is a, bit of a bit of a bizarre moment when that was revealed. I think, you know, my money certainly wasn't on, on that occurring. But anyway, so we had a conversation, uh, and what kind of transpired was that uh, Fox had been going to work in, in effectively a very, a very competitive environment. Okay, so online bingo, um, there's probably only a finite people of people, people that actually play online bingo, but there's an awful lot of different sites that you could go to to spend your half an hour or your five pounds that you want to, uh, you know, have a bit of fun of an evening effectively. So Foxy Bingo had come to the event because, in fact, they were actually looking for ways in which they could cut through the noise of marketing. And what they had actually been doing is, um, you know, actually working with uh, other things uh, in-house to try and develop some solutions. But I was kind of standing there thinking, so this is a huge gaming company that's come to us. I sort of flashed through one of the slides quite quickly. But GVC as a company make about one billion uh, uh, pounds in, in revenue each year. Um, they make all these games where people go to play and have fun online. 
So why was this person coming to talk to me about you know, what 3 Radical do and the sort of gamification that obviously our platform provides? So I was kind of standing there and thinking, this person is asking me to sell ice to Iceland, hence my talk. Okay, so a bit of an odd sort of setup. But what she actually said was that Foxy Bingo were already using gamification in-house. So they're already having sort of mechanics created where what were they trying to do is they call them everyone's a winner type games, daily free play mechanics where people uh, potentially win some sort of bonus where they come in and they get an extra pound or a 50p for free uh, to play online effectively. So she'd come to the event to actually find out if there were vendors out there that had some sort of solution that could do this, but do this in maybe a more fun and more scalable way. Because in actual fact, what she told us was the mechanics that they were creating in-house were flawed for a number of different reasons. So hopefully this is going to play. Ah, oh, blast, how do I play that? OK, so what I'm going to say is, if I have played that out, you get a fairly dull experience. You kind of get to, I think in this case, you pick a crystal ball. And the crisp ball comes up and it gives you a message to say whether you've won or lost. Okay, so something a little bit different, a little bit out of the ordinary. But it's kind of quite classic that that says, you know, an error has occurred when we try to get your, your prize, try again later. So this was one of the things that the guys at Foxy Bingo were, were battling was that as soon as they created these things, uh, they were quite often out of date or, 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 or unreusable immediately. Not only that, they were built in an obsolete technology using Flash. Very slow to build, often took them three or four months to create these mechanics. Um, very resource intensive, so it took people away from generating uh, new games for people to play online. And also very simple in terms of mechanics. So uh, I guess we quite often call them sort of single shot mechanics, where people would engage once and that was it, sort of throw away. Nothing else that you could do in terms of extending the engagement with people. The other thing was that these were very heavily reliant on cash bonuses. So you play one of these mechanics to say win, win a 50p or a pound that you could immediately go and play through on the site. So they kind of came to us and said, well, OK, so we've had a look at what you've done on the stand. Can you guys actually help us create something a bit more innovative, innovative that's going to cut through the noise? Just do something a little bit different effectively. So as some of you all know in the room, 3Radical are a uh, SaaS gamification platform. So what we have under the bonnet is a whole suite of capabilities, game mechanics, whatever you want to call them, that brands like Foxy can very quickly uh, pull off the shelf, uh, reskin, re rebrand, and then actually come up with what we call interactive experiences where you can extend the engagement beyond purely the game mechanic that they're playing, deploy them across a whole series of channels. So for Foxy being here, it was a responsive website as well as dropping it into a mobile app, and then reward people in lots of different ways. So what Foxy said was, well, okay, you know, gaming rewards are great, 50p a pound here and there. What we'd also like to do is maybe some things that sort of reinforce the brand, so maybe some Foxy Bingo uh, branded uh, rewards as well, effectively. So what we did was we, we sort of set thinking, what was, what's the best mechanic that we have in our, in our platform that would potentially allow us to extend the engagement with these consumers uh, and maybe get them to do some other activities as well as actually uh, coming to play? So the one that we went for was our board game mechanics. So a lot of you might recognize this if you've been playing the app for the event this year. Um, so the great thing about the board game mechanic was, um, due to the rules of the game, it's very difficult for you to win on day one. So we gave everyone two dice rolls, move around a board, and you're trying to collect sets of tokens. So as I say, if you've got two dice rolls and you have to collect sets of three things, very likely that you're going to win to begin with. And the other thing that's quite cool is it also drives repeat engagement. So if you can't win on day one, you come back on day two. And what we're doing there is very gently driving repeat traffic to the website for Foxy Bingo, so that people are going to us as a brand as opposed to all those competitors, okay? And what we say already touched upon is that we introduced then a mix of cash and non-cash prizes for the, for the players that are returning. Okay, so I guess that was kind of the core of what we wanted to do, but one of the cool things that the Three Radical platform can, can do is then take those mechanics and surround it with other activities that you're encouraging consumers to complete. So in this case, some of the things that Foxy were interested in were, could we maybe capture some more first-party data and possibly very gently uh, encourage people to wager a little bit more each day? So what we did was we came up with a sort of uh, complementary activities around the main board game where people could complete these actions on a daily basis to earn extra dice rolls. And the idea that we could then increase the number of actions that people completed so we started with a survey, just capturing some pop data, it also answer some questions about how foxy were you as a, as a person, tying in with the brand. We gave people some different goals around wagering, so if you're already playing, we, we had some thresholds where we would immediately reward you if you hit those thresholds. And those differed depending on what sort of value customer you were. 
And then going forwards, uh, you know, uh, Foxy could then look to do things like get people to share content, uh, refer people in, maybe get people to watch videos, uh, so on and so forth, effectively. So that's the solution. I'm really hoping that I can play this. I don't know if I can get it to... I don't. What a disaster. How do we get that to play? Right, so uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you the link afterwards. I'll share that in some way. where well, you can actually see the, the game playing out. So effectively, lovely board game mechanic, nice and interactive, nicely on brand. Uh, and so, you know, that was, that was pretty cool. So that's what we set up. Um, we had used that in another vertical, so we we're fairly confident that would work. Um, and that's, that's the call of key mechanic. And I guess the really neat bit then was probably the bit that we did around that. So this is probably the most important slide in the deck, but one that I'm not going to expect you to take on board. But this is just kind of the, the fact that when it came to the wagering element, what we had to come up with was a mechanism that allowed us to do some clever aggregation of, of gaming events. So if we wanted people or wanted to reward people if they had wagered £10 on Foxy Bingo, uh, quite possibly we'd be getting lots of transactions at a very atomic level that people have wagered 10p and 5p and 50p. So we had some very clever stuff going on to aggregate all that data and work out when somebody had hit a threshold to give them effectively a reward for, for that activity. Okay, so this was kind of October 2017. We'd never done anything in this space before, so we kind of sat back the night before it went live. Um, some people talked eloquently yesterday about playtesting. We probably hadn't really done that with a focus group, so we were a little bit nervous at this stage. Would it be a success? Would actually anyone try it out? Would they use it? Because that's a proof in the pudding. Obviously, yesterday on the panel, I talked about the idea that unless you're delivering against certain business outcomes, then you, your gamification might be the best thing in the world with the greatest narrative. But at the end of the day, businesses want you to deliver. So we switched it on. Lots of anticipation. So this is a report that we created in-house. And this shows the first few weeks, or sorry, the first few days, rather. So not bad, we could see people coming in. And as I sort of reveal the rest of that, it continued going forward at a fairly steady rate. Okay, but so what? This is a so what moment. We've got people playing. Okay, that's, that's kind of cool. What does it mean for Foxy Bingo? That was the next thing that we really wanted to ask. So this is where uh, Foxy could actually fill in the blanks for us. So what we got through email about a sort of month later was this report. So we've redacted the numbers, but uh, the kind of key findings are in the public domain. So this line here represents when the game went live. The blue line is uh, October 2017. The orange line is the, uh, November 2017. And what you can see clearly is that there's clear water as soon as we've switched on this game. And what this has meant is, is that we had actually increased the number of active players going to the Foxy site by 30% over the month, and we just sustained it going forwards. Okay, so from a business outcome, Foxy Bingo were, were pretty pleased with that. So 30% more active players. Uh, another thing that the guys also told us then was, in terms of retention, in terms of the people that they managed to keep in their brand, as opposed to going off and playing on the other gaming sites, this sort of finite pool of people, they also had this amazing stat, which we had to sort of triple check, which was 100% retention of all the people that played in November, came back and played in December. Dropped off slightly as people went through uh, to January, dropped off to 87%. So again, uh, I think there was a question yesterday during the panel about, you know, I'm Amazon, how do I know this thing works? You know, this stuff does work. You know, we proved that we've had these kind of results in, in lots of other verticals, casual dining, financial services. So as you can imagine, Foxy Bingo, we're, we're pretty pleased with that. So I guess really taking a step back, should we have been surprised about that as a result? And to be honest with you, we probably shouldn't have been, because like it or not, okay, and I appreciate there'll be different views in the audience here about uh, online gaming or online gambling, but at the end of the day, bingo players are online gamers. It just so happens they like to play a different kind of game. So they entirely, they entirely got the Martin campaign. You know, they knew it worked, and Foxy Bingo knew it would work as well, because you know, that's what their entire business is founded upon. And we weren't the only people that were impressed. Uh, the other thing that we were very proud of at Three Radical is that we also entered this with some industry awards with an organization called the IPM, Institute for Promotion and Marketing. Uh, and we received a number of awards, including the, the reward for, gold reward for, for loyalty. So what's the story been since then? How have we sort of uh, moved this on? So I guess the cool thing is that we've realized as we've grown from, from uh, player to professional, is that there's a whole different raft of ways in which gamification can be applied to marketing. And we're talking here about, obviously, an online, online gaming context, but this can be applied to any vertical, maybe retail, for example. 
So it's about acquisition and lapse re-engagement. So how do you use a very quick value exchange to, to draw people in? So it might be a scratch card or a wheel of fortune to uh, cut through the noise and maybe make your email marketing, your outbound marketing more responsive. So that's one use case. And as I say, that applies across pretty much every vertical. Another thing that we are tapping into now is the, the power of peer-to-peer -peer referrals. So again, in a similar gamified way, the fact that uh, we can encourage people to share uh, referral requests with friends. We're doing this now with ZZ, for example, whereby, uh, in this case, if somebody refers a new customer in, uh, they, again, uh, potentially both sides of the party uh, win a reward, so a free drink or a free pizza, for example. And again, having some game elements there as well. So the idea that we have sort of stretch goal uh, challenges for people. So if you refer five customers, you fill in lots of digital stamps, uh, and then again, perhaps you unlock a bottle of Prosecco at the end of that, that journey, for example. Other thing that's really popular then, again, this is, can be applied to, uh, I guess, online gaming, but also pretty much any vertical as well, is around onboarding. So whenever you have a new customer, likely is, likelihood is that there are going to be a certain number of key tasks that you want people to do, so top five activities. So again, why not gamify it? So again, these are core mechanics are part of our platform. So we can either deliver that as what we call a progress journey, where people do that sequentially. Um, it could be an achievements wall, where people have to complete tasks to unlock or, or fill in different rewards. Or it could simply be a game. So again, in the similar way to the board game, perhaps each task in onboarding allows us to, to move a counter around a board and win some sort of reward at the end of that process. And I guess then going back to online gaming, though, just to close things out, uh, I guess the elephant in the room is about responsible gaming, okay? So, yeah, absolutely, online gaming is problematic for a small number of people. So, you know, it can be addictive, there's no doubt. And I guess that's why we know gamification works, because it does tap into that, that kind of part of the psyche that people play things repeatedly, even when it's potentially bad for them. So I guess the other thing that we have now been exploring with online gaming companies is how do we actually make sure that they don't fall foul of uh, the law around compliance and regulation for gamers? Okay, so um, uh, online gaming is a highly regulated industry. Okay, so there is, uh, compared to perhaps other forms of gaming online, it is very regulated. So if you do market to people that are self excluded, as they call it, it could be pretty sizable in terms of uh, you know, fines that you can, you can potentially. Uh, uh, be, be, be sort of landed with effectively. So here are some examples. You know, we're talking very big numbers here, millions and millions of pounds. Um, we're in Holland, so just to say that you're not um, you're not uh, averse to this either. So, so what are we talking about here? So what are we talking about is that an interesting thing that also came out is by uh, using that simple board game mechanic, dropping that onto the Fox Bingo website. We also uh, significantly increased the amount of dwell time that people spent on the site. And that could be used for positive reasons as well. So uh, what we also have been talking to the gaming companies about is how do we use that time on site to potentially actually move people towards slightly lower risk activities. So if we know somebody based on big data and analysis that their player behavior and their patterns do look like they're an at-risk customer, well, lo and behold, we can actually potentially use gamification and our platform to pop up messaging that are um, encouraging players to move towards lower risk activities, maybe completely taking time out for gaming, or engaging with other activities that keep people within the brand. Uh, but as I say, they're not paying to play, they're taking time out, they may be learning how to uh, get advice or get help about a potential gambling problem. So that's the third thing, and I guess then uh, that's a pretty big deal both for the people themselves to make sure that they uh, resolve any issues they may have with gambling, also from a compliance perspective for, for organizations like GVC to make sure they're not landed with very big, big fines. So two sides of the equation there, both having a benefit potentially with gamification being used to drive people to that content. And I think you'll all agree that if we can achieve that using gamification would be a big win for both parties and that could be huge for everybody. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will Stewart-Jones. Thank you.